Okay, now we're going to take a look at the chorus progression uh, from Money for Nothing. Uh, as with the uh, riffs that we've looked at already, uh, the chorus is pretty much the same idea throughout, but will feature you know, little variations and little extra licks and fills. What I'm going to do is play through this chorus for you, and then we'll break it down. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So uh, elements of the verse riff uh, appearing in there. Starting off by playing an E flat uh, five power chord, which uh, is actually played on the first fret of the D and the third fret of the G. Then just drop that shape down onto the A and D strings to play the B flat five power chord. So. He actually strikes open A and D at the end of the B flat chord, giving him time to get back to the E flat. So it sounds like this. Drop down to the E flat again. And then shift the chord up two, fre uh, two frets to give us an F5. Sounds like this. and then an open D and G at the end as you take your fingers away to get to the next, uh, next chord, which will be the G5. So play those first few bars for you slowly. Three, four. Okay, then jump up to the G5, five on D, seven on the G. Take your third finger away to play five on the D and the G. Add the third finger again. Now add your second finger on the sixth fret of the G. Oh, sorry, on the sixth fret of the B. Strike it with the fifth fret of the G. So that bar. Okay, so now we play the G5 power chord again. And then we play five on the D and the G. And then we pick up by playing the five on the D string and then just play five on the G and the D. Then play a D5 power chord, which is five on the A and seven on the D and the G. And then move it up another whole tone to E. build. I'll play that section through slowly because at first some of the, the riffs might not make that sense and what you have to understand is that one guitar is doing one thing in one side whilst another guitar is playing a very similar riff in the other side so don't be afraid to experiment with um, you know variations on the rhythm. I've obviously uh, was only born with two arms, so I can only play you one guitar part at once. So I've only just chosen to take what I feel is the strongest guitar part out of the pair. So here's the chorus played nice and slowly. Here we go. Two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, now we're into our next verse. I'm going to play it through for you and then we'll break it down. Here we go. Two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, as you can hear from uh, 
part of the verse that I just played, very, very similar to the beginning of our previous verse, but just some very, very small variations, namely on the G string uh, around the third fret and the second fret, plus we include the third fret of the D as well. Uh, here's the first couple of R's, we go. What, we ha what happens there is we're playing the D and G, and then add our third finger, sorry, our second finger onto the third fret of the uh, G string whilst playing the open D. Now play the open D and G, add the third fret of the G, and then three, two, open on the G. Then back to the D and the G, and then add the third fret of the G. So that little three bar figure. Now we play the B flat power chord and slide that up to C. Okay, so first fret of the uh, A string, third fret of the D, and third fret of the G, then just shift the whole chord up, a whole tone. So all together so far. Okay, now we play another rhythmic variation on our open D and G, plus include the third fret of the G. Similar kind of thing again in the next bar, which is just open D and G, and then add the third fret G. So, and then we've got an open D, and then three on the D and the G, to two on the D and the G, to open D and G. Okay, next bar. Again, just a very simple variation around the D and the G. Adding third fret on the D. And then we play three on the D and G down to two. Open D and G. And then open D and G again, then to third fret. Sounds a whole lot more complicated than it really is when you play it. Let's have a listen to that last section nice and slowly. So, one, two, three, four. you don't have to play uh, all of these riffs exactly the same as uh, Mark Knopfler did on the original. Anyway, I'm going to play through another chorus for you now. This chorus uh, is predominantly the same as our previous chorus, just some few variations with rhythms, etc. So I'll play it through for you uh, so that you can uh, see how different it is. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, pretty much the same uh, as our previous chorus, just playing around E flat five to B flat five, E flat five, up to G, uh, F five, then up to G five for our riff, then C five, D five. slide that up into the next riff. 
Okay, now we've got uh, another verse progression, which is more of a, a, a kind of a down section for the verse. There isn't really a, a, a vocal part, it's more vocal ad-libs. So um, I'm just gonna play through this section for you and you'll be able to see how you can make variations to the riffs that you've already learnt. Um, or, you know, just have a bit of fun and, and just jam. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we uh, head into another chorus section and I'm gonna play through it for you so you can have a listen and see what's going on. Here we go, one, two, three, four. Pretty much the same as the uh, previous choruses that we've been looking at, apart from the final bar of E. We build on the E power chord. Then we pull off the D and the G at the ninth fret to the seventh. Then back to nine, play seven on the G, and then nine on the D and the G. So we get. Okay, going to play through the next verse and chorus for you. Uh, pretty much the same as what we've been looking at, so uh, I'm just going to, you know, go for it, play it based on the sections that we've already been using. Here we go. Two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna head into uh, a little instrumental breakdown section, uh, no vocals here, um, which is based around the original riff. So I'll play it for you just to refresh your memory in case you haven't got it so far. Here we go, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, now we're into uh, the money for nothing, chicks for free section, which uh, Mark Knopfler obviously uh, sings in his kind of, you know, very slurry vocal style, whilst Sting is singing a very nice high-pitched melodic variation over the top. Um, I must confess that this section just continues variations of a theme, really, uh, based on our original riff, plus the, uh, the riff which just really uses the open uh, D and G string. So I'm gonna play a very small section of this for you and then just show you a couple of the licks that occur towards the end of the track and then you're on your own. Um, as I said before, it's just variations on a theme. Here we go, two, three, four.
Okay, just to finish off, uh, obviously you've seen throughout the track, it's the same thing, uh, little variations, um, very, very cool variations, but things that you can kind of jam on your own uh, and, and that you can come up with. Um, as I said, watching Mark Notford play the track live, it changes all the time. Um, there are, actually on the live version, there's a solo, but uh, in the studio version, there isn't really a solo. There's a few licks that go from side to side. Um, just want to focus in on uh, a couple of those licks for you. Uh, the first one is this little pentatonic lick. I'm going to play it, then we'll break it down. Here we go. Two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, uh, based around G minor pentatonic, bending the fifth fret up a whole tone on the G string, and then playing three on the top E, then play three on the top E, pull off eight, sorry, six to, five, uh, six to three, then play five on the G, back to three on the B, and then three on the top E, and then six on the B. So you get... back into our riff. There's a few other little bends. Very, uh, very bluesy double stop bends around the fifth fret of the G and the B, and also holding the sixth fret of the, uh, B, uh, the B string and bending the fifth fret up a whole tone on the G string. But that little bending lick occurs quite a lot throughout the uh, extended outro. There's also a, a, the, one of the other guitars plays this little figure, which is a little bending idea, playing three on the B, bending five up a whole tone on the G. Move that up a minor third to six on the B and eight on the G, bend the G up, and then drop down a semitone to five on the B and seven on the G. Okay, that pretty much concludes uh, Money for Nothing. There's quite a lot for you to get through, um, but my advice to you would be to just really focus in maybe on the first couple of verses and choruses, get some of the variations down, and then have a little bit of fun with it on your own.